questions. Lord, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. There's nobody like you. Absolutely no one like you. You're amazing in all of your perfections. You're perfectly good. You're perfectly kind. You're perfectly loving. And you rescue us so perfectly. We come to you this morning with high praise, with worship from the depth of our hearts, our souls. And we say, I love you, Lord, and I need you now. Don't ever let us go, because you're the only one who's faithful to the end. Oh, sweet Jesus, we praise you. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. Today we ask your blessing upon this morning devotion on this, the 30th of September. We pray for those that are ill. A sad emergency I received this morning. My sister-in-law, Linda, Linda Colon. And we pray, oh God, that you be with her and that you, oh Lord, put your healing hand upon her. In the precious name of Jesus. Just minister strength and healing to her. Let no damage be permanent, oh God. Let her heal and fully recover. Be with my brother Eddie, Lord. Strengthen him, oh God. Be with my nephews and nieces and their children. Michael, Stephen, Claudine. Lord, let them know their mom is going to be okay. And so, Lord, we return to you because you are the source of life. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. And you're incomparable. There's no one like you. We can come to you at any moment, at any time, in any circumstance or situation. And we know that you hear us because you promised that you would. And so Lord, bless Esther, bless those that are online and those that will come on. May your name be glorified today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, Mercedes. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, uh, Ronnie, it must be on your end. There's no interruption on this side. And, uh, and we're verifying that with other devices. So it, it must be on your end. Maybe you need to get closer or go out and come back in. Good morning, Mildred. Oh, how we prayed for you yesterday and so good to hear you, at least see you on, on my, on my uh, remote here. And uh, thank you for coming on this morning. Jenny, God bless you, Jenny. Ronnie, of course. Um, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Timothy. Ooh, yeah, he got the job at Walgreens from Pear Tree. Oh, close by. You don't have to go too far. Pastor Rick, oh, how I miss you. We're supposed to talk. Uh, I'll be in the office tomorrow for sure. And good morning to you. And Jeannie Delgado, I've missed you this week. I haven't seen you around. God bless you. Praying for Iris, your mom, your stepmom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, my sisters made it into town yesterday safe. And they are were visiting with my sister Ruthie and took some some pictures that were so and they sang to her and they even laid in bed with her uh, well at least one of them did <laughs> my kuka thank you Miriam for filming and Gigi for being there uh, my sister Judy Miriam and Gigi came from west coast and down south and they blessed my heart, caused my eye to tear this morning as I was watching some of the video that they taped yesterday as they sang to her. And in honor of their, uh, <laughs> in honor of their uh, effort and their beautiful ministry to my sister Ruthie, who I love <sighs> with all my heart, we'll sing Coritos Sofritos to start. <laughs> 
Amen. Praise God. Hi, Sylvia. God bless you. Anybody else on that I don't see? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw her. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I wasn't there, Jeannie, that's why. Uh, I was taking care of my wife. <laughs> oh, okay. Debbie and Manny, God bless you. Amen. All right. Uh, little Sofito Corito, in honor of my sisters who came. They love it, they dance to it, and they enjoy it immensely. Te alabará, oh Jehová, todos los reyes, todos los reyes de la tierra, porque han oído los dichos de tu boca, y cantarán de los caminos de Jehová. Te alabará, oh Jehová, todos los reyes, todos los reyes de la tierra, porque han oído los dichos de tu boca, Cantarán de los caminos de Jehová, porque la gloria de Jehová es grande, porque Jehová es perfecto en su camino, porque Jehová atiende al humilde, pues mira de lejos al altivo, porque la gloria de Jehová es grande, porque Jehová es excelso en su camino, porque Jehová atiende al humilde mas mira de lejos al altivo te alabarán oh Jehová todos los reyes todos los reyes de la tierra porque han oído los dichos de tu boca cantarán de los caminos de Jehová porque la gloria de Jehová es grande Porque Jehová atiende al humilde, mas mira de lejos al altivo. Porque la gloria de Jehová es grande, porque Jehová es excelso en su camino. Porque Jehová atiende al humilde, mas mira de lejos al altivo. Porque la gloria de Jehová es grande. Porque Jehová excesa en su camino, porque Jehová atiende al humilde, mas mira de lejos al altivo. Jesús está pasando por aquí, Jesús está pasando por aquí. Y cuando Él pasa, todo se transforma, se va la tristeza, llega la alegría. Y cuando Él pasa, todo se transforma, llega la alegría para ti, para mí. Jesús está pasando por aquí, Jesús está pasando por aquí. Y cuando Él pasa, todo se transforma, se va la tristeza, llega la alegría. Y cuando Él pasa, todo se transforma, llega la alegría para ti. Para mí, Jesús está pasando por aquí. Jesús está pasando por aquí. Y cuando Él pasa, todo se transforma. Se va la tristeza, llega la alegría. Y cuando Él pasa, todo se transforma. Llega la alegría para ti, para mí. Solamente en Cristo, solamente en Él. La salvación se encuentra en Él, no hay otro nombre dado a los hombres, solamente en Cristo, solamente en Él, solamente en Cristo, solamente en Él, la salvación se encuentra en Él, no hay otro nombre dado a los hombres, solamente en Cristo, solamente en Él, y no hay Dios tú, no lo hay, no lo hay, y no hay Dios tan grande como tú, no lo hay, no lo hay, no hay Dios que pueda hacer las obras como las que haces tú, no hay Dios que pueda hacer las obras 
como las que haces tú no es con espada ni con ejércitos más con su santo espíritu no es con espada ni con ejércitos más con su santo espíritu y esos montes se moverá y esos montes se moverá y esos montes se moverá con su santo espíritu una mirada de fe una mirada de fe es la que puede salvar al pecador una mirada de fe una mirada de fe es la que puede salvar al pecador y si tú vienes a Cristo Jesús él te perdonará porque una mirada de fe es la que puede salvar al pecador y si tú vienes a Cristo Jesús Él te perdonará porque una mirada de fe es la que puede salvar al pecador y conoce con hombre de poder, a un hombre de poder, a un hombre de poder, y él te ayudará a triunfar, te ayudará a vencer, su nombre es Jesús, y él es fuerte más que el viento, su gloria es más que el mar, nunca termina su amor. En Él puedo yo confiar, porque Él es fuerte más que el viento, su gloria es más que el mar, y nunca termina su amor. En Él puedo yo confiar, y nunca, nunca Cristo me ha dejado, nunca, nunca me ha desamparado, ni en la noche oscura. Ni en el día de prueba, nunca Jesucristo me desamparará. Yo testifico del poder de Dios, de los milagros que Él ha hecho en mí. Yo era ciego y ahora veo la luz, la luz gloriosa que me dio Jesús. Por eso nunca, nunca Cristo me ha dejado, nunca, nunca me ha desamparado. Ni en la noche oscura, ni en el día de prueba, nunca Jesucristo me desamparará. Por eso nunca, nunca Cristo me ha dejado, nunca, nunca me ha desamparado. Ni en la noche oscura, ni en el día de prueba, nunca Jesucristo me desamparará. Jehová es mi pastor, nada me faltará. Jehová es mi pastor, nada me faltará. Si Él cuida de las aves, la Biblia dice así, Él cuidará de mí, nada me faltará. Por eso nunca, nunca Cristo me ha dejado, nunca, nunca me ha desamparado. Ni en la noche oscura, ni en el día de prueba, nunca Jesucristo me desamparará. Por eso nunca, nunca me ha dejado, nunca, nunca me ha desamparado, ni en la noche oscura, ni en el día de prueba, nunca Jesucristo me desamparará, oh Jehová es mi pastor, nada me faltará, Jehová es mi pastor, nada me faltará, si Él cuida de las aves, la Biblia dice así, Él cuidará de mí, nada me faltará, por eso nunca Cristo me ha dejado, nunca, nunca me ha desamparado, ni en la noche oscura, ni en el día de prueba, nunca Jesucristo me desampara, nunca Jesucristo me desampara. Yo testifico del poder de Dios, de los milagros que Él ha hecho en mí, era ciego y ahora veo la luz. La luz gloriosa que me dio Jesús Por eso nunca, nunca Cristo me ha dejado Nunca, nunca me ha desamparado Y 
en la noche oscura ni en el día de prueba nunca Jesucristo me desamparará nunca Jesucristo me desamparará nunca Jesucristo me desamparará sofrito corito God bless you Pastor Rick, ensalada, ensalada de coritos, amen. Wow, now my voice is shy. Amen, amen, God is good. Amen. Sylvia, Sylvia, did you dance? Oh, man, I love when Sylvia dances. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, she loves to dance. Praise God. Amen. Ah. Uh, There isn't uh, anything that I love to do more than worship God, I, <laughs> I guess. You know, I mean, I just love serving God. But there's something about praising him and worshiping him. And uh, this next song, uh, same key, I think, yeah. <clears throat> Talks about a friendship that is incomparable. There's no, no friend quite like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayerfully. I would love to tell you why I think of Jesus Since I found a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely he did something that no other friend could do Quisiera hablar de del amor de Cristo, pues en el ayer amigo fue de fiel con su gracia transformó. Mi vida entera Lo que en esta vida soy Lo debo a Él Nadie pudo amarme como Cristo sin comparable su vista solo el pudo redimirme del pecado por su amor y su Oh, 
All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his love being on. All around me, and he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares. Nadie pudo amarme como Cristo. Es incomparable su amistad. Solo el Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his word of love. But I'll never know just why. He came to save me Till someday I see his blessed face above No one ever cared for me Like There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much you care. Solo el pudo redimirme del pecado. Por su amor y su
come before you and we ask you oh God to hear our prayer oh God as we intercede for those that are in need Lord I present to you our sister Evelyn Lavoie who went through a full day of surgery three surgeons looking for every cell Lord, we we're grateful to you and we're thankful, Lord, that she came through that operation. Lord, but right now, Lord, as she is in recovery, it's a long, long journey. We pray that you would comfort and strengthen her and even in the pain of recovery because in order to heal, tissues need to join organs need to settle and all of that is upsetting and and painful but it's a sign of healing and so lord we pray oh god that you continually strengthen her be with her daughter francis her grandchildren her, her all of her children her brother gary bless him and lord we pray for mildred who i know who's on lord we pray that you put your healing hand on her body. Lord, her strength has been with her, oh God, and she's able to come on. But Lord, I happen to know, God, that what she's going through is very, very, very dire. And so we pray, oh God, right now in the precious name of Jesus, you just put your healing hand, a healing word to her, oh God, even now. Lord, and we rejoice. We rejoice with Frank Garidi. That is 93, 94 year old aunt Inesita came through the surgery, the hip replacement. Lord Jesus, only you, only you could do that, Lord. She's been through COVID and now a hip replacement, 93 years old, Lord, and still hanging in there strong. So much so, O oh God, that when she heard us praying, she blessed us. Lord, bless her doubly. Lord, I pray for Maribel's grandson, Jordan, this viral infection. We pray that his day in school was uneventful, Lord, and that he will continually heal from this mysterious virus that is affecting every joint in his body. Such a young boy. In the same way, we pray for Sister Susanna's cousin, Jet, a young boy, too, who has this condition in his brain, Lord, and it's caused such swelling and, and discomfort. Lord, in the name of Jesus, just, just be with him and heal him in Jesus' name. We pray, oh God, for Esther Neal, our Elder Larry's wife, oh God, a healing miracle and strength for Elder Larry. Thank you, Lord, for my sister Ruthie and my sister Rosie for receiving this beautiful gift, a reunion of sisters. 
bless them. Thank you for bringing them safely to us. We thank you, Lord, for the strength that you're giving Pastor Raul as he's going through chemo. And Beverly Peterson's son, Keith, as he's going through chemo. And Lord, we pray for Lori Cordero, Diane's sister. Lord, heal her in Jesus' name. Every cancer, every, every illness, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for our missionary, Valerie Rivera. She's recovering from surgery. We pray for all our missionaries, oh God, Liz Ramos and Belize, Dr. Wins. Lord, as he travels to the continent of Africa, Lord, be with him. And I especially present to you, Lord, my sister-in-law, Linda, who suffered this horrible fall, broken three ribs, may have to have her spleen removed today. Lord, I pray that she wouldn't have to have the need for surgery, but I do pray, oh God, that you would heal her and cause her not to have any kind of repercussions. The concussion, Lord, may she recover completely all of her important functions. Be with my brother Eddie right now as he's going through this trial be with them in the hospital. Guide the doctors, oh Lord, I pray. Let there be a miracle, oh God. And we present to you, we thank you, Lord, for our sister Ronnie who's feeling better today, Lord. We pray your healing on her. We pray for our sister Sasha, Lord, who's still, oh God, experiencing symptoms, oh God. We pray for her eyes, oh God. Don't allow blindness to come. We rebuke those, those, those blinding seizures, whatever they are, Lord. In the name of Jesus, put your healing hand upon her, oh God. Yes, Lord. And in the same manner, we pray for all those who are struggling with COVID. Pray for my sister Paula. She goes to see the doctor today. May she receive good news, oh God. Good news in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, oh God. We thank you for healing we say thank you because we trust you. We believe in you. We believe in miracles, oh God. And you're doing them right now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Amen. And so we say hello to Carmen, Carmen DeFrank, all the way from La República Dominicana, Quisqueyana. We miss you, Carmen. We miss you, but we're glad that you're safe. Gracias a Dios que estás bien, que el Señor te continúe bendiciendo, Carmen. Te extrañamos mucho, mucho, mucho. I see Xiomara on. Yeah, hi, Xiomara. I miss you so much. It's been more than a year since I've seen you. Oh, God, so long. Pray for your little girls and your son and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, I, I don't know if anyone else is on, but... We just thank you for being on, and and I, I I don't get to see everybody who's on on my my device here, but we 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 shorten it a little bit because last week I had so much to cover, and um, I went into Darby's time with the Spanish Bible study with uh, Pastor Rick, so I don't want to do that today. I, I want to give him plenty of time. So we're, we're doing the Beatitudes slow. Slowly, slowly, slowly. So open your Bibles. And, uh, and we're doing this from the book called The Good and Beautiful Life. The Good and Beautiful Life, a wonderful book. It's a second book in a trilogy. We already completed. We went through months of doing The Good and Beautiful God, which was a very simple way of doing theology in, in, in terms of applying it and allowing change to take place. And the author is James Bryan Smith, a disciple and mentee of Dallas Willard, who went on to be with the Lord, who wrote The Divine Conspiracy, a fantastic book on the Sermon of the Mount. And uh, also Richard Foster, Celebration of Discipline, and, uh, and a Catholic theologian, Henry Nouwen. And uh, all but Richard Foster have gone to be with the Lord, but uh, they left behind a good disciple in James Bryan Smith, also a theologian and a, and a theology teacher at a Friends uh, Seminary in Pennsylvania. 
And he wrote this trilogy, The Good and Beautiful God, The Good and Beautiful Life, and then the last one is The Good and Beautiful Community. And uh, so we're in The Good and Beautiful Life, and it's about transformation, formation. And his, his thesis, just as a reminder, you know, this is a refresher, his thesis is very simple. You cannot change until this changes by the transformation of our minds. You cannot be in victory until you take thoughts captive and you replace your philosophy and your ideology with the Jesus narrative. In, in other words, he says everyone has a narrative in their head that they go by. It comes from our instruction as children, from our parents. And our parents may have been good, but they may have been mistaken. It comes from culture, and culture has a great influence, and the culture is worldly. And so there's, there's, we're bombarded. We're bombarded with messages, subliminal messages through commercials, through TV, through what we see people doing in the street. And we're influenced by it, the, the way they dress, the way they talk. And, and, and we go along with it because, you know, you can't be fighting with everybody in the street. It'll get you killed. So some of it just gets clinging and, you know, you get home and you got to take a wash in the spirit. And, and those things impress us, and they make impressions. And they make impression on our children and on our adolescents and our young, young adults. And they press you. They press you with the value systems of the world. And all of that has to be challenged with the Jesus narrative. Jesus is the last word. Jesus is the last Whatever Jesus said. And so we really focus on the Gospels and, and the New Testament because it's, that's where we get the narrative. What does Jesus say about this? What does Jesus say about that? And then what we do is we challenge ourselves through soul exercises, prayer, scripture memorization, fasting, silence, being alone with God, solitude, and um, being accountable to another person, doing these studies with others, sharing, you know, writing, writing, not prayer to God. How do you see your life? What kind of life do you want to see? And, and sharing those things so that we can hold each other. And the memorization of the good and beautiful Great Commission and, and the most important commandments, which is the Shema. I shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy body, with all thy mind and your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus was saying, you can't love God if you don't love your neighbor. And if you love your neighbor, you can't love them right until you love God. So it's one of those like the, you know, the figure eight. <laughs> and go like this and that's it. So these on these two, Jesus said, the entire law and the prophets hang. So he summarized it in two commandments. And uh, the most important thing in life is loving God. Loving God loving God. And so when we, when, we, when we replace the narratives, you know, like, you know, the American dream has to be replaced with loving God. And loving God means loving his people and loving his purpose and loving his mission. Go and make disciples of all nations. So mission should be up front, a priority in your giving, in, in, in your working. And you should be working for the Lord. You know, he chose you before the world began and he designed works for you to do. And so it's, it's important that we replace it, the narrative in our minds with the narrative from the scripture, and specifically from Jesus himself. And the greatest sermon he ever preached was the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, very hard to interpret, very much um, looked upon as something for the future, not something for the present. We countered that. We said, no, no. The kingdom of God is the primary message of the gospel. The king, he started out by saying, repent and believe. Right? For the kingdom is here. He's the king. The kingdom is his reign. And though we're still waiting for the consummation of the kingdom, the initiation of the kingdom already took place. And we are living in the kingdom present, but always looking for the kingdom future. And so we have these two seemingly opposing but they're not they're paradoxical why because what's in the future is in God and God is in the present and guess what God is in us so we are in the present when we are in the spirit 
And, and, the, and, and when we are in the spirit, the present kingdom of God is available to us. He says, if I cast out demons, then the kingdom has come to you. If I subjugate the powers of evil by the proclamation of the good news, the kingdom is present. When I heal, when some, this is Jesus speaking, not me. Jesus said, when I heal, the kingdom is present. So although it's future for us, it's present for Jesus. And wherever Jesus is, he wins. He's never lost a battle. Wherever Jesus is, he's alive. And he, you know where he is? He's in our hearts. He's present in us, and we are in him. Amazing. Those are key principles for victorious living. Okay, so with that in mind, oh, I see Liz is there. God bless you, our wonderful teacher, Liz Torres. And the Karen Taurus, God bless them. I hope you're well protected in school. Amen. Uh, so let's, let's, let's uh, yeah, let's get this party started, right? Let's start doing this because I only have about 15 minutes to teach. Uh, here we go. Amen. We got it. We got it. Yay. Oh. I'm in the Frank. I left that on. You should have told me. <laughs> Where are you, Carmen? Okay, let's take that star out. Oh. Carmen, I know you're very, very special, but we got to get you. <laughs> there we go. We got you out. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? All right, so we, we covered poor in spirit, and we talked a lot about that. And uh, these are people who had nothing going for them, people who are in a bad state, and we learned uh, uh, yesterday and, and, and the day before, or not the day before, the Thursday before. Uh, and, and so will it cause the poor in spirit, the spiritual zeros, those who have nothing? And, and I thank our sister Gail Alvarez who reminded me that the, the zero is a number. And zero as a number is affected by the number that comes before it. And so zero with Jesus becomes a 10. Hallelujah. Yeah, and Jesus is multiplied the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, a million, and so on and so forth. The power, the multiplying power of the presence of the kingdom of God. I love that thought, and I got that really from Gail Alvarez. God bless her. We're seeing her this weekend, right? I'll be seeing her this weekend. Praise the Lord. Um, James Bryan said, Smith says, blessed are you who are feeling marginalized from God, who have nothing going for you spiritually, for you too are invited in the kingdom. And so that, that's what we covered yesterday. So we'll, we'll go through all of that. And, uh, then we, 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 uh, we said all of those who were marginalized, like, you know, that's the very good news that the people who were not included, the people who were included from the temple, the lepers, the sick, the paralyzed, they were excluded from the temple. They were considered those who, who, um, who were cursed of God. And even in the synagogue at times, uh, certainly lepers were never allowed. Only certain sick people were allowed, and, and, and Jesus healed on the Sabbath, and they got upset about that. But they were often excluded. And, of course, when you go to a temple or you go to, to a synagogue, you'll see there's a fence or, or, or a barrier, and men are the ones who are in the congregation. Women have to be behind the barrier. They're not allowed in the inner sanctum of the synagogue or the temple. And, uh, but the good news is that Jesus includes those who were marginalized, the sick, the poor, women, the half-Jews, the Samaritans, uh, the broken persons, uh, people who were like the Samaritan woman, you know, affected by many bad choices. They all heard the good news, and the, and the good news is that they are invited to the kingdom ball. Amen. And uh, so then we went yesterday on blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And we covered that yesterday. They have suffered a loss and are overwhelmed with grief. And I talked about how in psychology it teaches us that every loss has to be grieved. It's not just when people die. It's any time you lose something, you lose a job. Uh, your husband divorces you or your wife divorces you or your children are not speaking to you or or your son is in jail you know any anything that separates you from those you love is a loss and every loss has to be grieved and uh, so COVID-19 has done that to us and and because we haven't been able to grieve we have what I call truncated grief 
And that cause, you know, whatever is not mourned completely will continually affect you for sometimes months, weeks, months, years, and sometimes an entire lifetime if you don't get help. And so Jesus is saying, hey, uh, I'm going to take the negative state and I'm going to proclaim that it can be turned around into something good. And why and how does he do that? He does it because in the kingdom, those in the kingdom grieve very differently from those who are not in the kingdom. Those in the kingdom grieve with hope. And the hope is the resurrection. Hallelujah. And so, and we borrow that from the Apostle Paul, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep, those who have died, so that you will not grieve as indeed the rest of mankind do, because they don't have hope. And so three great things remain at the end of life, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Love, Jesus came, died for you. So that when you put your faith in him, you end up with hope. And what's the hope? He rose, you rise. Hallelujah. And so uh, the kingdom citizens find comfort because they know that God is in control. No matter what happens, neither life nor death can ever separate us from the love of God. Romans 8, 39. Not even life nor death can separate us from the love of God. So God gets the last word. The devil never gets the last word. God gets the last word. And the last word is the resurrection. We are the people of the rising. We rise. And so we're not downtrodden. You know, we, you know Paul said, I'm downtrodden, but not destroyed. I'm getting back up. And, and I believe he wrote that experience when he was writing to Corinthians was based on what happened in the book of Acts when he went to, I think, the Lystra or Derby, and they stoned him, and they left him for dead. And in the next morning, he rises, and he goes back. And he goes on, right? And later on in chapter 12, he says, I knew a man, if you call him a man. And he saw things that he could not speak about. And it probably was when he died, having been stoned, and then Christ resurrected him and brought him back to life. But he saw things that he was not allowed to say. Uh, you have all these people who die in writing books, and I don't know if it's true or not. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I, the, I know that when Paul went up and he saw and he came back down, he, he was not allowed to share there are things called mysteries. There are secrets that belong to God. Amen. But the resurrection was clear. And he lived that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. So suffering is never apart from resurrection. You can't have a resurrection until you die. Amen. So uh, eternal life, joy forevermore, no more crying. That's what awaits us. And so the, 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 those that mourn can be comforted because they know that the last word is life forevermore without crime, without violence, without hatred, without sin, without the devil, no sickness, no pain, joy forevermore. And so Jesus is saying the unblessable condition can be blessed once you enter the kingdom of God. So um, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Okay, so now he's coming. And, and we realized, and yesterday we covered this, that the word meek has different in connotations and and interpretations and meekness is a virtue meekness is a virtue now these people that he's talking to don't have this virtue so there's there's two ways of looking at meekness meekness as a virtue that the holy spirit constructs and builds in our life is the ability to refrain from asserting ourselves to remain humble and gentle by the power of the holy spirit you can retaliate but the holy spirit gives you instead of retaliation gentleness restraint that's called meekness so meekness is not weakness it's power under control okay but that's not what jesus is speaking about because he said blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth because jesus th that interpretation is from the greek word however jesus spoke in aramaic that is the common language that he spoke and the aramaic the aramaic the word meekness is praus and it refers to those who cannot retaliate when harmed because they are handicapped they're in that they're in a condition where they cannot defend themselves so what he's talking about is blessed are those who have been bullied blessed are those who have been taken advantage of because of your lack because of your handicap and um, in modern terms this is a case of victims of bullying certainly those who are handicapped are too poor 
and would not be considered blessed. If you're poor, that's a handicap and you couldn't, you, you live, you know, begging, you live begging and you depend on whatever you can beg that day. If you're a leper, you, you're worse, you know, you, they have to leave it and, and, and leave it for you. And, and so you're depending on the, on the charity of others. Um, and Jesus said, blessed are those that are in that condition, for they're going to inherit the earth. And so um, that, that's a powerful thing. He says, you don't have nothing. Blessed are you because you're going to get everything. And God's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And we shall reign with him. And so uh, I don't mean I have nothing now, but I'm going to have something, you know, later. And that's basically the message that he's giving. So he's, he's doing it. And an upside down message and this is shocking it's jolting to the pharisaic mind it's jolting to those who you know who who have triumphalism and and and, and in their theology they don't understand what luther understood is there's no triumph without a cross there must be a cross first and uh, and and then we experience the crown um and Jesus is saying that God is for the oppressed. That's what he's really saying. God is for the oppressed. Those who are marginalized, those who are excluded, God is for you. And that's a beautiful, beautiful. Now today, you know, next five or six minutes, I'll finish it. Then next Tuesday, we'll get into it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Now, hunger and thirst are two of the most powerful drives in human experience. They really are. Um, there's a lot of drives. There's a sexual drive. There's a drive for success. But hunger and thirst are the most, they're, they're the most rooted. As a matter of fact, even if you're not thinking about it, when you're hungry, you're forced to it. When you're, when you're malnourished, you begin to get sick. When you're thirsty, you begin to die. You dehydrate and your organs begin to suffer. So hunger and thirst are such, uh, if you've ever been really hungry, you could eat a cow. Uh, so thirsty that you could drink a lake. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that, that intensity, that intensity. He's saying, but, but the intensity is not for food or for water. The intensity is for being right with God, righteousness. And so um, without it, we cannot thrive. Without hunger, let's say you lose your appetite, you cannot thrive. You'll lose weight and eventually you die or you're, you're going to have to be force fed through a tube. Without uh, water, you definitely die. Three or four days without water, you, you begin the whole process of becoming septic and all the poisons and toxins, toxins in your body will kill you. You can't thrive. You cannot thrive without food and water. There's no, there's no thriving without food and water and oxygen. Those are, those are three, three elements that we cannot live without. Physically, we cannot live without it. So he's using the physical analogy for a spiritual hunger and thirst. Hunger, hungry and thirsty are people with a great need. So he's talking about people who realize that they have a severe spiritual need. They're hungry, are starving for nourishment. But what kind of nourishment? Hunger and thirst are not enviable conditions. They are conditions that of sadness. And so he's saying unsatisfied people in the case in this case, are those who are starving for a right standing with God. They, they've come and they come to believe that their lives are cursed, that nothing works right, and they're thirsty for acceptance, that people would love them, and, and they're longing, they're longing for forgiveness. Everything's gone wrong. I must be cursed. It's because of what I did, because of my past. It's because, you know, what I did as a kid. I went to jail. Nothing prospers, you know, and so... They're dissatisfied with their life and they're hungering to be right with God for the blessing. How many have a hunger for the favor of God? The favor of God is an awesome thing. And Jesus said, blessed, well off are the people who have hunger and thirst for righteousness. And the longing to worship is one of the greatest needs because God created us for worship. So worship is like the oxygen of uh, of the kingdom, you know, and, and of course, prayer is the oxygen of the kingdom, but worship is the highest form of prayer. The highest form of prayer is not praise, it's worship. And when Jesus taught the, the Lord's prayer, he said, uh, our father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. So the first thing he does is sanctify the name. That's worship. You know, praise is when you thank God for what he's done for you. Worship is when you thank God for who he is. And he's holy. Holy is your name. Your name is above all things. And so the highest form of prayer is worship. When people don't worship God, they must get an idol. They replace God with drinking, with money, with fame, with material gain, all of these things. And even in, in theology, people start changing the theology and wanting for things rather than the presence of God, the favor of God. Surely the favor of God brings things, but we don't worship God for the things that we want. We worship God for who he is and he is holy. And he's saying that those who have come to terms and realize that God is what they need the most, they're going to be satisfied. When you get to that point where you're hungry and you're starving and you feel like you're dying without God, you seek him with all your heart. And Jeremiah prophesied, if you seek him with all your heart, you will surely find him. Oh, praise God. So when that craving is not satisfied, we turn to idols that eventually imprison us. And that's addiction. Addiction is really a worship issue. Addiction is a worship issue. We were created to have fellowship with God, to have communion with God. When we don't, we're missing something and we replace it. St. Augustine said that the, the spirit of man or the soul of man is a vacuum that only God can fill. When we don't have God, we fill it with idols and those idols become our God. So addiction is well, uh, uh, an idolatry of putting things substances practices habits above your search for god and there are so many imprisoned people so many addicts sex addicts drug addicts alcoholics you name it uh gambling everything that was never meant to edify you can become an idol and so the good news is that Jesus is here proclaiming and that he's the king and hence the kingdom is the only satisfying resources, resource. So what is he saying? That our righteousness is as filthy rags. Our righteousness, that's what Isaiah wrote and, and Paul emphasized it. Our filthy rags, if you knew, know the original meaning of what that represented in Judaism, then you know it's something unclean. Something unclean. And something unclean if you touch something unclean, you can't come to worship God. You must first wash. In Judaism, washing, you can't eat, you, everything. I went, uh, you know, went to a rabbi's house for a Sabbath, and they had the washing, and I put my hands, in, and they, they, they pour water, and that way you wash. You can't, you can't, you can't do anything before you wash uh, because touching something unclean, something unclean, either blood or death, something dead, or animals that you you consume animals that are considered unclean you cannot approach god and that's that's what it was in judaism well our righteousness is unclean there's nothing good in us there is none righteous no not one romans 10 uh, 3 10 this is why the sermon is often depicted as the impossible ethic uh, this is too much no, our righteousness doesn't match it it doesn't but the good news is that the one who can make all things right and make everything new, you know? You know, the 517 Christians, right? 2 Corinthians 517, right? If any man be in Christ, behold, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In that context, he says no one should treat a brother based on his past. Once they come to Jesus, it's from Jesus on, not whatever's past. The blood covers that. The new creation, there's a new creation. And so the good news is that those who were unclean in the past can become clean in Christ Jesus. It's not our righteousness, it's his that meets the perfect, the perfect demand of a holy God can only be matched by a holy God. That's why Jesus is God, because he meets the holy criteria that is necessary for coming into God's kingdom. And uh, it's not the impossible ethic. It's the beautiful, beautiful God 
who gives his only begotten son. And so the only place where all things are made right, the only place where all things become new, the only place where everything can be satisfied, the only one who can give what you hunger and thirst for is the king and you receive it by entering under his rule. And that's what blessed are they that hunger and thirst means. When you come to your wit's end and you come and worship and say, Jesus, fill me with your righteousness, not mine, but thine. Have thine own way. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let it be so. And so today we conclude this session and morning devotion by saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because you can give what nobody else can give. No political party can give you that. No bank, no one in Wall Street can give you that. No. There's no spirit. There's no demonic spirit. There's no santeria. There's no, there's no religion that can give you that. Not Islam, not Buddhism. Buddhism gives you nothing. As a matter of fact, the perfect state to them is nothingness. Uh, nothing, nothing satisfies like Jesus. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true. I will tell you how you changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other so kind as he no one else could take the sin and darkness from me oh how much he cared for Father God, I thank you for this day and for this short but inspiring devotion when we realize that nothing we bring to the table will ever satisfy the highest demand of a holy God. Yet in your kindness and your love and your mercies and that agape love, you sent forth your Son, the holy and righteous Word of God became incarnate took on the physical limitations of humanity, lived and walked, was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin, falsely accused, mistreated and harmed, crucified and buried. And on the third day, on the third day, he rose again. And he sits at the right hand, interceding for me and for other weak ones and others who were marginalized and those who are not classified spiritual and he advocates for us and he ever liveth to intercede for the saints Lord I thank you for Jesus there's no better friend and I don't come to you in my own righteousness I hide myself in the righteousness of Jesus Christ your beloved son my awesome Savior. 
Oh, how I love him. And oh, how I need him. Never let him go. Never let me go, Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, you can forget about the rest because Jesus is the best. Sunday, we'll be back on in here and uh, I'll be at Love of Jesus on Saturday and Sunday. Lord, help me. <laughs> be blessed, my friends. Bye-bye.